Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I want to do some Japanese Dreamcast pickups. It's been a little while since I've done these, so um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show off some gameplay. Uh, we're starting with Shangri La uh, Cyber Angel Mahjong Battle. So here we have an interesting mashup. This is essentially 90s cyberpunk mixed with versus Mahjong. So uh, I will let the English intro to this game do the explaining. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you one of them cyber warriors, huh? You're a super programmer who can convert hell. You can change the five senses into a program and slip directly into any network. That it? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, and then you put them fiendish algorithms. Yeah, you put them algorithms in the chip to kill in the cyber coliseum. That's it, isn't it? Yeah? That's it. Yeah, me and those fiendish algorithms. So uh, here we can see I'm playing against Asaki. Um, this is at its core a traditional, uh, you know, versus mahjong game where you play against uh, quote unquote pretty girls. I have to use that term loosely here. I think these girls all live in a three-story house in the Uncanny Valley. Um, you know, this this really is a product of its time, and uh, I don't think that we'll ever get to see something like this again, um, thankfully. <laughs> but uh, here we have uh, some different items that we can choose. These, uh, I'm sure, affect gameplay. I'm not sure exactly how, um, or if you need points to buy them, or really how that works. But um, So here we're, we're setting up to play the game, and uh, you know, from what I know, Mahjong is supposed to be a four-player game. That's how it's typically played. Um, I think that the two-player version is actually more popular um, in these video game uh, versions for whatever reason. But um, you know, even back in the day, I was not very good at these games, and I haven't gotten much better. But I definitely wanted to pick this game up uh, for old time's sake, and um, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll get a little better at mahjong here. Next up, we've got uh, Puyo Puyon or uh, Puyo Puyo Four. Now, uh, you guys are probably all familiar with this game in some form or another. It's a falling blocks style puzzle game similar to Tetris. Uh, this is by Compile, uh, a company famous for shmups, and uh, they made the Mado Monogatari series of dungeon crawling RPGs. Uh, and they later used those characters in this series of puzzle games, uh, Puyo Puyo. And from what I hear uh, from Joe, um, X Corn Muffin X, uh, apparently people from uh, Compile went on to make the company Compile Heart, which I did not know. So here, um, Adede is looking for a, a carbuncle, that little uh, cute Pikachu-like thing that tends to sit on her shoulder. Um, she's gone to the circus and Carbuncle has disappeared. So uh, this guy is, this skeleton tea here is like, you know, when it comes to to drink, so you, you, it's got to be tea, right? You know, Japanese tea. And she's like, really? Well, I don't, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, more importantly, I'm looking for Carbuncle. And he's like, what? I'm going to teach you to like respect the importance of tea. So uh, now we're going to start our battle. <laughs> Ocha, he says, tea. You know, maybe I'll look this up. Like this whole skeleton tea thing, it seems like it seems like there's more of a pun to it than I'm really getting. But uh, anyway, so um, so this is it. You know, uh, you guys have probably played Puyo Puyo before. Um, the two sides of the screen here. If one side does better, it drops you know blobs on the other side. And uh, as you can see, I, I was soundly throttled by a skeleton tea here, so I'm not going to take that sitting down. Uh, I actually found this to be pretty challenging. Um, but in a, in a rematch here uh, on the first level, uh, I did manage to beat uh, Skeleton T. So there you are, Puyo Puyo 4, a uh, very fun uh, entry into the Puyo Puyo series. Next is Wind, a Breath of Heart. Now we're going to see some familiar names pop up here. We have Hune X, Alchemist, and Minori. 
Now, Hume X and Alchemist you'll probably recognize as mostly publishers, maybe publisher developers. Uh, Minody seems to be the developer on this game, and we've encountered them before in uh, Bittersweet Fools from the Simple 2000 series. So, very interesting. Um, you know, that one really stood out for me as one that I might actually want to play uh, some more of. So, um, you know, maybe I'll become a fan of Minody developed games here. It's, it's possible they uh, seem like they're still developing games to this day. And uh, not a lot of stuff that I recognize. Probably the one with the most name recognition aside from this is uh, EF. I don't know if that's pronounced F or EF, but uh, that's another one developed by them. So you can see here these two characters are riding the train. This is uh, Makoto, um, and he's going back with his sister uh, Hinata to uh, the town, I guess, where he was, was born. Uh, after his father died, they had to move away. So um, we're getting a flashback here with a uh, character, this girl who uh, he's she's got her pinky out. They're gonna pinky promise that they'll see each other again, and um, and she you know she she wants to marry him uh, later. He's like, well even if, even if you know you're 50 years uh, you know 50 years go by, are you still gonna you know marry me? It's like if I don't if I don't see you for 50 years, then I'm not gonna get married that whole time. So, uh, so he's like, fine, all right. He's like here, so he does he does the promise that he'll he'll see her again and they'll get married. So, uh, no idea how this game is in the end, but uh, very similar to the premise of Love Hina, um, seems like a promising uh, visual novel. I'm very interested in uh, Wind, a Breath of Heart. Following that is some more visual novel goodness with our favorite Kindle Imagine Develop. This is uh, Memories Off Second. So there's an ominous noise. Uh, for anybody who has played Higurashi no Nakakoro ni, um, can't help but send a bit of a shiver down your spine. But uh, I don't think that's the intention here. Um, this seems to be more to establish that this is summertime. And uh, we have some prose here that's kind of just talking about the setting, the scene, you know, it's uh, uh, it's the summer, like it's, uh, you know, r raining, or it just rained, there's, um, you know, kind of looking out over the, this campus, seems like a school uh, campus, so um, she's like, hey, you can, John, look, look, uh, so she's, I think, pointing out this uh, teru teru bozu, which is a, um, a little charm that when it's raining, you will uh, you'll make and you'll you'll tie and you'll hang up um, for the rain to stop. So she's kind of commenting on how the you know it did a good job that the the rain stopped. And uh, you know it's it's interesting here. Um, you know we've got the there it seems like they're trying to draw some real comparisons between the Teru Teru Bozu and um, you know this this girl here with the uh, the sheet over her head and uh, it's interesting I don't know um, exactly what the the implication is it seems like uh, they may have been running in to get out of the rain you can see that uh, she seems a little wet um, and uh, you'll see he, he implies that uh, basically she's naked underneath the sheet so you know either their their clothes got soaked and they kind of ran in here or you know maybe something else was going on here um, at school um, in the summer when nobody was around so um, you know I might have to read this again I think it's left a little bit in intentionally uh, vague but a very unconventional start to a uh, romantic visual novel after that is uh, Idol Janshio Tsuku Chao. So from what I read, uh, Janshi is a term for a professional or veteran uh, Mahjong player. So this title, uh, Idol Janshio Tsuku Chao, I believe refers to like, we're gonna make a professional idol, you know, like a star a Mahjong player. Um, here we can see this is uh, kind of a traditional um, versus Mahjong against pretty girls. And uh, this is, unlike our last game, um, you know, aided uh, by significantly <laughs> by the character designs by Kenichi Sonoda, um, you know, I would say is, is downright sexy in comparison. So, uh, so this, this girl um, is a, obviously a waitress, and uh, it seems that she 
she's like, oh, okay, you know, talking about her order, like she called earlier, and she's like, yeah, we've got all this stuff. Um, she's going through different kinds of pie or something like that. She's like, I, I didn't order, you know, or anything like that. Like, I'm here to challenge you to Mahjong. So he's like, what? Um, so, you know, from what I read, this is a, a popular series uh, by Jalico. They've um, they've had a, a whole bunch of entries in the series. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, you know, for an, an anime fan, certainly, um, you know, Kenichi Sonoda's designs here, um, you know, he's somebody who uh, you recognize his stuff from Gunsmith Cats, uh, from Bubblegum Crisis. He did a lot of work with AIC. And, um, you know, I think that it lends a lot of character to what's going on here. And there's obviously this, like, story and, like, weird characters so uh, it seems kind of interesting for one of these sort of games uh, I don't know that uh, you know anything is really gonna make me a great mahjong player but you never know um, here uh, I'm down to just bamboo I've actually managed to make quite a few uh, tile sets here so you know I'm just trying to find something to finish this off and I have a heck of a time finishing hands I'm not uh, really good with it and I, I think she got sumo off of my discard but um, you know don't ask me the rules look them up yourself and good luck uh, and finally, it is S, um, not pronounced E's, like when you have Y and S, but this is E-S-S. -S. So I don't know a lot about the production of this game. Uh, it is credited to Terebi Asahi, uh, Foursome, Densu, and Sega. Uh, other than that, all I know is this looks like a pretty interesting sort of adventure game. So she's like, oh, I'm sorry for calling you in suddenly or something, it was a little hard to follow, but she said, uh, you know, I, I don't know all the details myself. Um, he's like, you know, we need, we need your assistance, we need your ability. Uh, so they have a, a man here, um, he's being, being medically treated, uh, he's like, he's a police officer, and, uh, so they, they basically, uh, don't have any clues for this, this incident. And they need your help. I don't know if you're the only person that can do this, but it seems like we're diving into his consciousness. We're going to uncover his memories. So it's interesting. The game just kind of dumps you off here. And I was like, what am I supposed to do something? And you start moving the analog stick around, and it starts moving the images to match each other. Uh, you can press a button to see what your controls are. Um, but it's interesting. You're sort of given these... Uh, these limited environments in which to sort of move around in and interact in with this kind of limited interactivity. Um, and we're just uncovering, um, you know, clues, these little uh, bits of information from his, uh, his unconscious. Here we get to see a little video clip um, so where this woman gives him a tie. Um, that gives us the opportunity to uh, f then focus on the tie, which kind of gives us... Uh, uh, this this blurred background we realize becomes this room, and uh, it took me a little while of messing around to figure out, you know, what can I do here? Uh, come to find out, at a certain point, you can zoom around, you can move around and look at other objects uh, here. So uh, we've uncovered an, yet another scene. Um, but basically, it seems like we're just trying to establish the sequence of events. Um, you know, here he's he's put on his tie. Um, that was something that we got to see, so, uh, you know, it seems like all these little things kind of establish a, a sequence of events. We're trying to figure out when these things happened and what ultimately led to um, him being assaulted. But uh, that's that's about it. Um, you know, this is a very interesting looking uh, pickup here for the Dreamcast. Um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, seeing these uh, pickups, and I'll definitely have more to come. Again, I'm still pretty behind on these, so hopefully you'll join me again for more Japanese video gaming related videos. Thank you for watching.